Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? God bless you. I know you've been standing a while. You may be seated. I thought I heard a couple of sighs of disappointment uh, when Brother Boyd announced me today. But that's all right, because I, I, I'm a little disappointed, too, that I'm on the list. Because after last Sunday, Sister Amy Townsend, I, 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 I want to see when you back on the list. Praise the Lord. What a word that was. Uh, that wasn't just for the ladies. There was some things in there for the men that I've been chewing on all week. Praise the Lord. I had another young lady tell me just a few minutes ago, I won't mention her name, she said she had a word. I said, here you go. You can have my spot. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm going to be mindful of the time today. I believe we're having fried pork chops and smoked pork chops and lima beans and rice and we having cornbread mama or biscuits cornbread crackling cornbread so I'm going to be mindful today Isaiah chapter 43 and while you're finding that and I, I, I apologize for this illustration because I'm going to lose everybody in the house but maybe two or three with this but uh, the PGA, which is the Professional Golf Association, has a regular season, very similar to any other sports, basketball or baseball or football. There is a season that consists of about 10 months. And uh, in that season, traditionally, there is four-day tournaments played, Thursday through Sunday. Thursday and Friday begins with approximately about 125 golfers. And at the conclusion of Friday, they take the best score and the worst score, and they create an average. And then if you are above average, you get to play on Saturday and Sunday. And if you're below average, it's called missing the cut, and you're not able to play. Saturday, although the tournament is won on Sunday, Saturday is a very important day because you need to be moving or positioning yourself on Saturday to be at the top of the leaderboard on Sunday. If you're not in the top eight or 10 on Sunday, it's very likely you don't have a chance to win. So Saturday is a very important day and it's Saturday that you need to play your best. And so often referred to at the opening of the broadcast, whether that be TV or radio, the announcers will say, it's moving day. And everybody refers to Saturday as the moving day. It's the day you need to, to be on the go. It's the day you need to be leaving Thursday and Friday behind and you need to concentrate on what's before you. And so it's from that thought that I'm going to preach to us today. It's moving day. It's moving day. Isaiah 43 and 18, and you can remain seated if you wish. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know? The writer and the Holy Ghost there is asking us a question. Don't you, don't you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We often say that the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. It's been said that the Lord will make a way where there is no way. And here we're finding out that the Lord will make a way in the wilderness and in a dry and barren desert, he'll make a river. Would you pray with me this morning, Father? I love you and I'm so thankful for the spirit that we have felt in this house. Thankful for the word that we've already heard. Thankful for the worship that we've had. I'm asking for the next few minutes, Lord, that you anoint our hearts, that you anoint our minds, that you speak into our lives. Let the word of God go forth and let the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost touch us and change us in the name of Jesus. When I speak of moving day, I'm talking about a transition. A uh, transition not only in our individual lives, but also collectively as a church, as Hatch Bend Apostolic Church. So if, if you're listening or watching today by way of uh, the internet, don't be offended, but this morning I want to preach 
to hatch been apostolic church and I, I know that it's been said a hundred times in the last few months but please allow me to say it one more time this world is in trouble it's in a mess, not, not just America. We're all very aware of our current situation and what's taking place and our leadership and, and all across this country, but the world is in a mess. And we are, make no mistake about it, we are in the last days. When the prophet spoke and said that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, we're, we're in that time. We're about to see that time. We're about to see God do things that we've never imagined. And by saying that, let me tell you this, that there will be people coming through those doors in the next few weeks, the next few months, the next few years, should the Lord tarry, that need our help. And if we're going to be able to help them, we must get to the place that God is calling us to be. Not to say that we're not striving or reaching. I'm just here to encourage us and motivate us this morning that we've got to dig harder. We've got to dig deeper. We've got to push more. We've got to be able to help them. We've got to move from the normal and we have to transition and sometimes that means leaving some things behind. We've got to be very careful. The Holy Ghost would speak to us this morning that we've got to be very careful not to hang on things of the past or if I may say it this way, not to build a golden calf and just, just hang out there around it and make a memorial of it. We can't enshrine some things and we can't let something be so important or so big or so grand that we can't get past it because we've let it be a worship to us or we've enshrined it. In our reading this morning, the Holy Ghost asked the question, the writer asked the question, shall ye not know it? In other words, it's possible. It will be done so that the Lord will do something new, better, greater, grander, more than you and I have ever seen or experienced before, but we can miss it if we're still hanging out in the past, if we're still worshiping old things, if we're still hung up on what we used to be. When the scripture says, remember not, he is saying, don't let memories of the past keep you from moving forward. We know that the children of Israel in the, in the Exodus murmured and complained because they wanted the garlic and the leeks and the onions that they had back in Egypt. And, and I'm not saying don't be thankful for our past. Be thankful for the wonderful memories, but, but do not be a prisoner of the past, whether that be good or bad. And don't misunderstand me this morning. I'm grateful today for the heritage. I, I'm grateful for my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother who made sacrifices sacrifices for the kingdom of God, for my grandfather and grandmother who contributed to this church and for a father and mother that raised me in this apostolic way. I'm thankful for saints that has went on before us that paid a diligent price and, and worked hard to make this church what it is today, a great church. But having said that, you and I can't live our lives based on that or them. We can't hang our coattails on their doorsteps and say, well, oh well, Boy, they sure had some good times around here. Love to hear the stories about the revival and the prayer meetings. No, sir, no, ma'am. You and I have to be pushing, pushing to receive more and to do more in the Holy Ghost. This is a different time, a different day, and a different area, and it's going to take a different approach to reach the lost and help the hurting and lost people that God is sending our way. There are people coming our way, and I believe that, and I prophesy that this morning. There are people coming our way that know nothing about the church. They know nothing about the Bible. They didn't grow up in Sunday school and hear all the Bible stories. They have no idea what we're talking about when we say speaking in tongues and being filled with the Holy Ghost. They do not understand being baptized in Jesus' name. They don't understand words like holiness or standards or righteousness. I, I, I recall uh, years ago when we first began our prison and, and jail ministry, the first trip Pastor and I made to our, our Lafette County Jail, the first Sunday we just merely uh, went to introduce ourselves, didn't take a message, didn't take a Bible, just wanted to let them know who we were and what we were about and that we would be back next Sunday to have a Bible study. And all that week with great anticipation, I prepared. I, I'm sure Pastor did, but I, I had a camp meeting message ready. And uh, we, we, we got to the, to the 
to the jail and it was time for them to come out where we were and their pastor and I was waiting when the door opened for a large group of men to come out and two, two come out. Is that correct? So we sat out on a couple of chairs and a bench. I shared my thought and pastor shared his thought and pastor talked about David and David's integrity and his character and the way he conducted himself. We had a great Bible study. We left and we returned next Sunday. Again, the same two men come out and before we got started, they asked the question, can we ask you one thing that we have been wondering all week? We've talked among ourselves. We've talked among the men on the job site. We've talked after supper. Could you please explain to us what the word integrity means? And I'm not saying this in a bad way. Is this the truth, Pastor? Pastor? A light went off in my head that said, wait a minute, you you got to back up here. Not to be disrespectful, but we're going to have to start preparing some stuff that they can understand. They they don't know the Bible. We're going to have to teach this in a way that they can can marinate on it. They can chew on it. And we may have to change and adapt to some different things in order to help people. I'm not talking about changing the message. I'm not talking about watering down the doctrine. I'm preaching to us this morning about moving to a place where God wants to take us, a more spiritual place. It's a place, it's a place that's gonna require more praying. It's a place that's gonna require more worship. It's a place that's going to require each and every one of us to draw closer to God. You're not just close to God because this church is close to God. You'll be close to God when you make it personal. It's time for a new thing. God said, behold, I will do a new thing. And I I don't pretend that I know everything that God has in store for us as a body or as individuals, but I do understand that the word transition implies movement. Transition speaks of progress or forward motion it's always about leaving one place to get to another Elisha couldn't get to Bethel without leaving Gilgal he couldn't get to Jericho without leaving Bethel leaving some things behind something sometimes it's going to require some participation from us and we we're not going to get there by accident ladies and gentlemen we're not going to get there just because a few of us prayed about it and a few of us are seeking us we got to join together like we've never joined together before and we have to cooperate and move with the Holy Ghost there are three main components in moving First of all, you got to let go of the old. Secondly, you have to trust. And thirdly, you've got to embrace or take hold of the new. You know, we wonder why is moving so hard sometimes because most of the time, and I'm speaking spiritually, the Holy Ghost doesn't tell us where we're going. It's just time to, to get up and move. God speaks to our spirits. You know, God told Abraham It was time to go, to leave some things behind and and seek the land of promise. Abraham didn't know where he was going. He just trusted God. And that's what we have to do. We've got to trust and we've got to decide if we really want everything that God has prepared for us or we're going to settle for the comfortable and the familiar. Because if we want what God has for us, there is something waiting for us, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some discipline. We're going to have to push. That was Elijah's role in Elisha's transition. Elijah was sort of playing the devil's advocate, if you will. In other words, Elijah was speaking to try and discourage Elisha from receiving God's best. Of course, Elijah wanted what was best for him because he had put over 10 years of his life into him, but he wanted Elisha to understand how difficult of a journey this was going to be, how tough this is going to be at some time. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're in the valley. It's not always going to be mountaintop living. Sometimes you're going to have to push and sacrifice. And he wanted Elisha to want it enough to let go and leave the comfortable and the familiar to go after the unseen and the unknown. Moving is a difficult place. Many times because it's kind of an in-between place. You, you don't feel at home here and you don't feel at home there yet. You, you sort of feel lost. I can remember, uh, many, many of you are, know that Jennifer and I in the last year and a half or so remodeled my grandparents' home and and uh, was trying to get it done, and the plan was to complete it 
complete it and finish it all before we moved in. And along that process, Jennifer was diagnosed with, with cancer and began her chemo treatment. And there was a few things undone that, I, that wasn't quite ready. But I could see where this journey was headed and because of her lack of strength and, and, and she couldn't do much. I decided on myself that, you know, I'm going to make this move myself. Plenty of people offered. My mother offered. I, I said, stay back and stay away. In this movement, we had done decided that we was going to purge a little bit. So I ordered me a 40-yard roll-off dumpster and had it backed up to the front porch. And I put me a trailer beside that dumpster. What was on the trailer went to the new house, and what was on the dumpster went to the dump. And can I tell you, it wasn't but about a quarter of what was in that mobile home made it to the house. The rest of it went to the dump. And I'm telling you that to tell you this. You're going to have to leave some things behind. We, there's some things we can't take. You, you can't take a bad attitude where we're going. You can't take a poor spirit where we're going. You can't take a poor prayer life where we're going. You can't take weak worship where we're going. We're going to have to move and we're going to have to leave some things behind. I know it's comfortable. We know what to expect here. We've got a handle on things here. And where we're going, we're not sure about. But it's a place where our faith is going to be tested. It's a place where we're going to be tempted to grumble and complain. And we're going to start looking back at what we used to be. It's a place where we're either going to break through or we're going to break down. But it is a necessary place because it's proven ground. It's where we prove to God by our action and by our commitment that yes Lord we want this. We know it's going to be hard. We know it's going to be uncomfortable. There's some unseen, some unknown but we're pushing for it. You know I think one of the most exciting inspiring things that I have learned from the story of Elijah and Elisha over the years was this. Elisha went beyond his mentor not in a disrespectful way but he pushed for more. He developed his own appetite. He just didn't want what he saw in Elijah, but he wanted double. And I say this in great respect to those who have went on before us. I want more. They've set a benchmark. What they had was great. What took place around here has been awesome. But I want more. I want to see more. I want to do more. Elijah not only wanted what he had seen with Elijah, but he wanted what he had never seen. And that's why we as the church have to be prepared to move into the place where God is trying to take us and prepare us for. We have to get to this place if we're ever going to impact our future and if we're going to impact the church. Is there anybody in here with lost loved ones around them? Sure there is. What we've been doing, I say this respectfully, but what we've been doing obviously is not working because they're not sitting beside us today. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but it's time to change. It's time to do something different. We're going to have to take a different approach. I believe Elijah, as Elisha's minister or mentor, knew something about what God had in store for Elisha. He perceived it. Of course he did because he was preparing for it. But I believe that Elisha's request even surprised Elijah when he said, I want double. I want more than you had. I want what God has for me through you, but I want something for myself. And I'll say again respectfully, I love to hear the stories and of, of the old days and look at, at all the miraculous things that was done around here, but I want my own. I want to see I want to see for myself the blind eyes open, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the cancer healed. I'm tired of reading about it. I'm tired of hearing other stories about it. I want it for myself and I want it right here in these altars in our midst. We serve a God. It's done been said this morning. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Everything that he's done in the past, he can do here today. It's faith. It's faith that's going to have to be increased and moved in our lives. But we've got to prepare ourselves. We've got to prepare ourselves for moving. And that begins by deciding this, first and foremost, that we want it. We want something better. We want to learn it. We want a greater anointing. I believe if I ask you, everybody in the house today would want a greater anointing in their life. And we're only going to, going to get that or achieve that by drawing closer to the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question, and you're going to have to be honest with me. Who wants to be closer to the Lord? 
Everybody in the house, to get closer to the Lord, we're going to have to push harder and do more because preparing means we're going to anticipate the new, the different. We don't know what's coming, but we know it's going to be something greater. It's going to be unknown. It's going to be uncomfortable. I'm not trying to make anyone feel uncomfortable today, but I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to get out of our box. It may not be church like we're used to, The people that God sends us may not be people we're accustomed to. They they might be different. Sometimes moving is uncomfortable, but we must move. You know, when you go camping, you don't you don't take your hair dryer and your curling iron and the and the coffee pots. You don't take all the comforts of home. You leave those things behind because camping is an experience. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. The mosquitoes is going to bite. There's not going to be an air conditioner. But that's the joy of camping. That's the experience of it. You've got to move out and anticipate something new. And that's part of preparing to move for ourselves. There's going to be some things that we're not used to. There's going to be some things that we're not accustomed to. We're liable to see some things we've never seen before. But it's facing the future fearlessly knowing that this is a God journey. And the one who brought us here is going to be the same one who leads us through the unknown if we'll trust him. I believe this is the reason that God would lead the children of Israel through the wilderness with a cloud by day and a fire by night. God's part was to lead the way by a pillar of a cloud or a pillar of a fire. Their part The children of Israel's part was to stay ready to move. In other words, they were to live every minute with an attitude of readiness to move. When the cloud moved, we moved. When the fire moved, we moved. And we've got to adapt ourselves to that as a church. When God says move, we can't sit on a stump and say, well, I don't like where we're going. I can't can't see the end. When God says move, we can't sell up and pout and say, that's, that's, I'm not used to that. That's not what I'm good at. That's not what I'm familiar with. When God says move, we've got to move. I'm going to ask our musicians to come this morning, and I'm going to take us to the book of Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Now this was put in the scriptures to illustrate to us that we are to never get bogged down and stuck. Now one of the, one of the things that we like to say is, well, this is where God put me. This is, where, this is where God has me. But we've got to remain sensitive to the Holy Ghost and be ready to move when God says move. And let me be clear, I, 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 I kind of tongue-in-cheek joked about it at the beginning about Sister Amy and another individual this morning. You don't have to be behind this desk to speak a word into somebody's life. Matter of a fact, I assure you this morning, believe it or not, there's more words spoken to people's life from not behind this than there is behind it. Everyone in this house has the ability. If the Holy Ghost is alive and inside of you and you've been baptized in Jesus' name, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to step into a hospital room, lay hands on somebody and pray a prayer of faith that God would lift them up. If the Holy Ghost is inside of you and you've been baptized in Jesus name there's no reason you can't step to someone who is discouraged open up that book and speak a word of encouragement into their life the Holy Ghost is our guide and our leader but we have to stay ready to move there has to be a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost that cloud and that fire it's not natural we don't see that today but that cloud and that fire is inside of us. That Holy Ghost that we have, that's what leads and guides us. Moses didn't know the way through the wilderness either. He was dependent on the cloud and the fire. Moses' greatest responsibility was is the same as our pastors, to keep us stirred up, to lead us, to keep a spirit of anticipation, to keep us always ready to move, looking forward and leaning forward, to keep us pressing and wanting more. I'm not a prophet, but I feel in my spirit and I have felt through prayer and through the Holy Ghost
Ghost and I believe in my, my heart that there's some of you that have felt this same thing. There is a shift taking place amongst our congregation. Something very powerful is getting ready to happen. And God wants you and I, he wants this church to be ready. We can't sit on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Just because we don't feel like worshiping is no excuse not to worship. Just because we don't feel like praying is no excuse not to pray. Just because we don't feel like witnessing is no excuse not to witness. We've got to be ready. We cannot wait. We can't wait till it's time to move to get prepared. If we do that, we're going to miss the boat. We're going to miss out on what God needs us to do. We have to start preparing now. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. If you're going to run a marathon, you, you don't just get up that Saturday morning and decide, I'm going to sign up and run. No, no, no. Months, months, maybe even years ahead of time, you start preparing you start conditioning your body. You, you start eating right. You start exercising. You start doing the necessary things that it will take to make you competitive on race day. And so we can't just wait till God sends this flock of people to us or sends this revival to us to say, all right, it's revival time. What do we do now? We've got to be ready. And you get ready by preparing now, preparing now. And the best way to do that, I hate to use the word pretend, but the best way to do that is let's just pretend right now we're in the hottest revival this church has ever seen. Let's pray like we're in a revival that we've never seen before. Let's worship like we're in a revival that we've never seen before. And that's what I'm preaching about today. It's moving day. And God needs us to be ready to move. Would you lift your hands across this house? Touch us, Lord, and strengthen us today. Help us, Father, to be what you've called us to be. Help us to be ready to move when you say move, God. Help us, Lord, to be to draw our strength from you today, God, and to trust you. Even though we may go into the unknown, I wholeheartedly commit to you, and I'm moving when you say move, and I will let the Holy Ghost be my guide.